Sunshine 106.8, Dublin's new place to relax. This is Saturday Live. I'm Carol Dooley and I'm very, very much looking forward to having this conversation next with our next guest. In fact, I've been looking forward to this all week. Uh, this lady went from virtually having nothing to really amassing a very, very successful business particularly through the use of social media. And Samantha Kelly, a.k.a. the Tweeting Goddess, is with us this afternoon. Samantha, thank you so much for for joining us. Uh, Before we go into the secrets on how to make social media work, take us back, share your story with us. When did this all start happening for you and how is it that you ended up being such an expert on social media? So about six years ago, uh, I barely had a Facebook page. I wasn't very savvy on the computer or anything like that. And I was at a stage in my life where I was kind of wondering what to do next because I was hitting 40. My daughter, who was hearing impaired, was just about to start school. My father had just passed away, so I was a bit devastated, to be honest. And um, I, you know, when you kind of start thinking differently and you start things are you, you just start thinking about things differently and I felt like you know you only live once all that kind of stuff and my marriage had just broken up as well oh my gosh you had a lot on your plate I I had loads on my plate and but what happened was um, I think it was in a way it was a good thing because it kind of made me start thinking outside the box and thinking about the future and all that kind of stuff and what happened was um, out of necessity I was going into a supermarket to find some kind of gift to give uh, my my daughter at the time who had got her first period. And I felt sorry for her, so I went, ah, oh, jeez. And it's such a taboo, like, I said, right, I'll go and I'll get her something nice, a nice little gift. And I couldn't believe there was no starter sets for little young girls, like, because they're so young now, they're starting at 10, like. Yeah. And I said, right, now why is that? And so all the things went through my head. All these ducks were lined up in a row for me to do something, but I didn't know what. So I said, I know, I'll do it, right? <laughs> I hadn't a clue about business, nothing, right? And I just said, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start this business. So I, I, I thought up the name Funky Goddess and that's where the goddess came from. And um, I just started doing research on the internet and then my sister was great. She helped me. She built a website and she said, now you have to go on this Twitter thing and, you know, start promoting your business. I was like, I have no idea how to use Twitter. So I had to kind of just learn from scratch. But what I discovered was that I was really, really good on social media. A lot of people think Twitter is about uh, throwing out ads and stuff, but it's actually not. It's about building relationships and it's about people and how you make people feel and about putting out good stuff that people want to read or they want to be entertained. They want to, they want to to be. Well, yeah, because there's yeah. so much competition on Twitter that yeah. you want to make sure, I guess, that when you put something out there, that someone's going to read it. That's right, it. As opposed to, oh gosh, here we go again. That that sounds a bit boring. I'm not going to bother. Exactly. And you see, it's all about standing out from the rest because there are, is a lot of noise out there. But so I just discovered I was really good. And all I was doing was talking to other mums and other mums in business. And then I was talking to lone fathers who turned out to be a huge customer base for me. And then... Um, people started approaching me and saying, how did you get so many followers? Because at that stage, I had about 5,000 followers or something. And uh, I went on Dragon's Den with the product and stuff. So, of course, my profile rose then. And then also I did get upset on the Dragon's Den. So I'm the girl that cried on Dragon's Den. So just remind us there, Samantha, about Dragon's Den. For those of us perhaps who didn't see it, what exactly happened? Oh, well, actually, when I was getting my makeup done... um, when I was getting my makeup, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time, every time. Oh, when yes. I was getting my makeup done, um, it was January because it's filmed in January, and uh, a butterfly landed on the makeup girl's light. And I was just about to go up to the Dragon's Den and the girl goes, oh, why is there a butterfly here in January? And I said, that's my dad, because me and my dad used to watch it all the time. So I I tell that story a lot, but it's actually, it, it really, really was, he was in my head then when I went up. And then, of course, because I'd done everything on my own, I got no support from anybody and I just kept going and going and going. I kind of, I suppose everything just hit me when I was actually standing in front of the dragons. So, you know, and you can get quite emotional, you know, you're building up to something and then uh, everything just hits you. So I suppose that kind of helped though, because people saw that I was a human, you know, and they kind of went, oh God, you know, and they felt sorry for me. So that kind of helped. So people empathised with the whole thing as well, because everyone knows someone they've lost and all that. And people like the butterfly thing as well. So, um, so kind of, I I just went from there and then I, I, I sold the business to someone who could do what I wanted to do with it because I didn't get, sometimes you don't get the money after Dragon's Den, it doesn't materialise. And um, I just kept going. 
and kept going and then people started approaching me and asking me could I help them and my first client was actually um, a hotel in Wexford and they asked me and I said yeah I think I can help you but all I did was I went back to their customers that had already been there and I just started talking to them again and next thing they were booking another break so it's really just about making the customer feel special and it's about how you make others feel so it's like if I follow someone you know they kind of go oh what does she follow me for and next thing they're having a nosy at my website they're looking at my past few tweets I mean we all do it we all have a look at the person see if they normal you know see if these people are going to add value to our day and if they see you putting out valuable stuff like con- like you know um, tips and stuff like people want that and that's what we want on Twitter we, we want information we want to be educated but even all the social media platforms I mean y- you're not going to follow someone or add someone unless you think they're going to enhance you enhance your day as Mm. well yeah you know because I mean look let's face it times are tough still there are a lot of people still struggling out there so anything that can help us and and I noticed that a lot of small business owners were on Twitter and I noticed that a lot of female entrepreneurs in particular were, were really using it really effectively like women are great communicators there's a lot of great men out there too. I'm just saying that I noticed that most of my followers were in that kind of age bracket as well of 30 to 50, had had their own businesses as well, were building their empires from their kitchen tables, basically. And I said, right, like, you know, these people, they were like me. And so I just felt, you know, if we could all help each other, we could all succeed together. And that's really where um, I started building communities. And when once you build a community, like that's actually gold, you know, for 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 an ad campaign, for promotion, anything like that. I mean, if you have a community around you, like you have your community of listeners, you know, if they like you, they will do your marketing for you and tell others about you. And you see Twitter's like word of mouth on speed. So if you, if someone likes what you're doing and what they're going to tell others about you. So it's really, really powerful. If you just joined us, uh, we're chatting with Tweeting Goddess herself, Samantha Kelly, this afternoon uh, at Tweeting Goddess, tweetinggoddess.com. Samantha, please do stay with us because obviously you're now a master mistress of social media. I want to find out from you uh, advice on how we kind of follow suit and where you think most of us are going wrong and the things we should be doing on on a daily basis uh, to get control and to get maximum return from social media. This is Sunshine 106.8. Stay with us. Strolling in the park, watching Sunshine 106.8, Dublin's new place to relax. This is Saturday Live. I'm Carol Dooley and Samantha Kelly, a.k.a. the Tweeting Goddess, is still with us. Samantha, a remarkable uh, tale, really, of how you mastered social media, making it very much work for you. So let's talk about how we make it work for, for us now, what you would advise. Let's start by the things that perhaps we're doing wrong. Maybe we're not even aware of it. Well, there I can list things where people are going wrong. So I suppose, okay, if anyone that's listening that is thinking of starting a business and using Twitter to promote their business, first of all, you have to find out, are your audience there? They might not be there. Like if you're trying to get in touch with young people, they're on Snapchat and they're on Instagram. If you're in beauty or hair or makeup, uh, weddings, anything like that, you really should be on Instagram, Pinterest, because that's very visual. It's all like photographs, um, you know, and if like the demographic on Twitter will be aged 35 to 55 and the highest growing demographic are the over 55s, which is really interesting. Um, so, you know, first of all, you have to decide where are your audience? Uh, then you have to decide what it is that you're going to bring to the table. Like, it's not all about you. You know, it's like, how are you going to help others? So um, don't link Facebook to Twitter is the biggest mistake I is see. Is that people. right? Yes, because um, it comes up on Twitter as a Facebook link. So number one, we don't know what the link is. So we're afraid to click on it. And number two, we're on Twitter and we don't want to go to Facebook because we're a bit snobby that. <laughs> but Twitter users, we usually just like Twitter and we don't want to be going into Facebook. Also, it looks bad in your Twitter, in your feed. If I see loads of Facebook links, I'm going to go, there's no point in me even engaging with that person or asking them a question because they're not on Twitter, on Facebook, you know. So things like that. Um, also, don't automate your thank you for following me. I'm sure you've got some of them. If you follow someone and then they go, thank you for following me. If you like, go to my Facebook page and like my Facebook. Yeah. It's like, that's you right. haven't even said hello to me. Things like that people don't like. People on Twitter don't want to be sold to either. We love we love building relationships and we love when people give us a bit of attention as well. So, you know, engagement. We love we love having chats. 
the search box. Don't underestimate the search function. And if you put the words of what you're searching for, so let's say you're into kite surfing. If you just put kite surfing in the Ireland in, it'll show you all the people that have mentioned those two words. You and know, what do you so, do then? You just, if you're going to... So if you find these people, what you do is you follow them, if you think they look normal. So you follow them and then maybe just have a look and engage with them. And then that's the conversation started then. And then you just start building relationships from there. Visuals are really powerful. They get retweeted 200 times more likely to be retweeted. Um, and then also, hashtags so if you use hashtags like hashtag radio hashtag Dublin hashtag whoever your target audience are and whatever hashtags they're using let's say you see a, 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 a tweet about travel so travel is a great one so even if you get a picture of a sunset and you put it up you know use the hashtag travel you, know, you will attract other people there are also Twitter chats I started Irish Biz Party which was on a Wednesday night but I don't run it anymore Michelle and Chris run that now there's Belfast Hour there's uh, Women's Inspire Irish Health Hour there's all all these different kind of hours and Twitter chats, if you want to just jump in and get involved in them, you just use the hashtag and start talking to the people who are using that hashtag. And if you're in the health space, Irish Health Hour is great. If you're in the beauty space, there's Irish Beauty Hour. But I created Women's Inspire for women. That's on a Tuesday night, 10, 10 p.m. And I I chose 10, like I'm very, I am very strategic, even though I don't realise it. But I chose it because the kids are in bed, everything's done uniforms are ready because in fairness most of us have kids as well not all of us but you know it's just to think about the person and what they're doing and my target market my target demographic my tar target audience it's important to know what they're doing there's no point in you being there if you're not going to actually use it and start really building relationships and it takes time and you know it's not an add-on social media is not an add-on it's essential now because your customers are there and video is very powerful it's fascinating. Yeah. It, is, it is fascinating. But as I said, and as you agreed with Samantha, it does take time. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, yeah. And you have and to be willing to put the time you do, into you do. it. I'm and really do you think passionate that a lot of businesses, this is one of the reasons where they're going wrong, is that they're not devoting enough time to social media and really they probably should employ someone just to, to do that for them and nothing else. Absolutely. I, I, it's so important to have somebody that's assigned that role. And even if you can't assign a person to it, that you can give one person to do, right, this every half hour after lunch or whatever it is time, that's their role and that's their task. I recommend people do 10 tweets a day. So you have different time zones. The busy times are the morning commute, uh, coffee break between 10 and 11. Lunchtime is also another busy time. And the busiest time on Twitter is between 9 and 11 p.m. Where is it going? Is Twitter still going to remain as relevant? Uh, Snapchat, Instagram, what's next? What's next? Okay, well, video people, if you're not using video, either on your website as an introduction to what you do or whatever, stuff like video, you need to look at video because video is so powerful. I'm the founder of the Social Media Summit. Uh, we did it there um, in Croke Park there recently. The, the, the highlight was all about video, all about video and communication and re building relationships and getting back to community, getting back to engaging with your audience. Uh, video is very powerful, so you need to look at video if you're not using it yet. Snapchat is really starting... Like it's not just the young kids now. I'm on it. My daughter's disgusted, you know, <laughs> so I'm on it now. Uh, she's not happy about that at all. But I think Twitter is always going to be relevant because of the live, the real time tweets. So if you want real time things, I think real time events is going to happen on Twitter. Um, I think that's the future is like, and also there'll be TV shows on Facebook. I think it's, there's just so much potential but we can never tell there could be some totally new thing that comes out sure we didn't know about Snapchat a few years ago so you just don't know I just know that um, it's important to to learn a little bit of everything just to make sure that you don't like I had to I mean I'm tweeting goddess everyone was like what are you going to do if Twitter goes I'm like well I know other things too you know and that's why I have the Women's Inspire Network because that's actually helping others online because I find as women as well, it's hard to get away and go to networking events. It's hard to get away. What's the story with these breakfast events at seven in the morning? I could never get to one of them. And I think that's very unfair because then you're kind of excluding women, really, women with children anyway. Yeah. I, I thought that there was a gap there that people, if they want to learn, they have to take time out to go to a workshop. Sometimes they have to travel on the bus. It takes a whole day, all that kind of stuff. But now I've created an online community and we do webinars online. We do coffee mornings every week online. 
and and it's amazing the magic that's happening is unreal because we're doing we're, we're, we're giving each other tips we're brainstorming and then I can get someone on the screen so actually I, I would get to know your face before I even meet you in real life and then by the time we meet it's hugs it's not handshakes this is where it's going to be everything online like well you know what you're you're quite the inspiration and it's, it's just mm-hmm. amazing to think that you were at a point in your life where you really basically had no choice but to do I know something <laughs> I know. and then you discovered something about mm-hmm. yourself that maybe if all that hadn't all come together at that time I had no if idea the planets weren't aligned the way they were yep. it never would have happened for yep. you I had no idea and to be honest I actually didn't think I, I was able to offer anything to society like um, but I mean like I'm I'm nine years sober on the first of June it's, uh, that's a big thing for that. me because that actually is what really turn things around because when you start living your life a different way it makes you open your mind to new ideas as well and I think if I wasn't doing that I wouldn't be here either so I have to give that credit as well like, can I just add as well I have a really good supportive partner and I think now I do, which is great. Uh, you know, when I was on my own, it was much harder. And I think it's important for you to have some kind of support network around you. So even if you didn't have other women in business around you, I mean, it's important to have like a good family member that can, you know, maybe babysit or maybe, you know, do the laundry while you're not like I'm here in Dublin, like, but he's holding the fort at home. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So it's important to have some kind of support. It does make a difference when you're a businesswoman, yes. m- a man as well, you know, that you have that support. It's like behind every good man, behind every good absolutely, woman. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Samantha Kelly at Tweeting Goddess, Women Inspire Network. Congratulations on your success. I really do take my hat off to you and an absolute pleasure to have you here on the show today. Saturday Live with Carol Dooley. With AmericanSky.ie. The USA Wedding or Honeymoon Experts. From the glitz of Las Vegas to the thrills of Florida. We'll help turn your dream into a reality. AmericanSky.ie Sunshine 106.9 FM Don't forget our email address is always open to you, Saturday Live at sunshineradio.ie. And please do follow us on Twitter too, as we've been talking about Twitter, so you can keep up to uh, speed with what we're doing for you every week and give us some feedback too. At Sat Live Sunshine is our Twitter handle. All right, one more guest to uh, introduce to you before we finish up at one o'clock. And very much looking forward to chatting with renowned classical singer, classical tenor. Uh, he's not just a singer, actually. He's uh, he's got quite the creative brain to boot. He was a former member of the Celtic Tenors and now he has a show coming to the National Concert Hall on the 24th of June which sounds like it's going to be an absolutely wonderful evening's entertainment. It's called Hallelujah. It's the brainchild of Niall Morris and Niall joins us before one. We'll give you a chance to win tickets too. The Paddy Co-